Today, I wanted to provide an update on the STC optics ND filters. If you've stumbled on this channel for the first time, my name's Robert Hall. I'm a photographer from Michigan, and I make tons of videos on photography and lighting equipment. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, consider subscribing. Last spring, I shared a video about these clip-in ND filters and how I planned on using them instead of high-speed sync. If you don't know, HSS reduces the peak brightness of your flash, and therefore, if you instead use an ND filter, you can do wide aperture portraits in bright outdoor conditions using less powerful flash equipment than HSS would require. I used these clip-in ND filters all of last year, and they were most amazing in the summer as I could get away with shooting outdoors in bright conditions using primarily Godox 8200s. Then you may have seen from maybe a BTS image on Instagram, somewhere around March, I started using HSS again. Many people messaged me asking why I stopped using the STC Optics filters, many assuming there was a fatal flaw that caused me to go back to HSS. That wasn't the case at all. In February, I bought the A7R4 as my primary camera. With no real announcement or explanation, Sony reduced the cabin size or the area around the sensor. I learned this the hard way while in Vegas when I put my six stop and filter on at the beginning of a session only for it to get stuck. After prying, we did eventually get it out. I initially wrote this off as a fluke, maybe I just pressed it in too hard, but later I used my four stop ND filter for another shoot and it got stuck even worse. It was so bad that we had to pull it out using players and the tension caused the ND filter to break atop of my camera sensor. So I spent hours carefully blowing out every speck of glass dust off the sensor and thankfully got away without any damage to the image sensor. This did damage the cabin a bit with some small bends in the frame surrounding the sensor. I haven't noticed this affect the image quality though. It was at this point that I finally looked at STC Optics website where they had already released a statement that their previous Sony full frame filters would not fit the A7R4 or A92 due to changes made by Sony. So the reason I started using HSS again was only because clip-in filters for my A7R4 didn't exist. Until now. I just received my order of an updated 4-stop, 6-stop, and 10-stop ND filters from STC Optics. In addition to the fit being updated for the A7R4 and A92, there are a few changes that I appreciate. So on your left I have the old filter and on your right I've got the new one. And the first thing I'll say is that gone is the old Game Boy cartridge case. This is actually a negative. I like the fact that these filters used to come in a Game Boy cartridge case. It was just a nice little piece of nostalgia. Well, now they come in these cases and I must admit they're just a little bit better because once you open them, they're just perfectly held in place with this little foam divider. Second, each case now includes this little magnet rod which allows for easier placement and removal of the filter. To place it in, you just align over the sensor and press down, then put one finger over the bottom to pull and release the magnet. To remove it, simply tap the magnet to the metal and it will easily pull off. Not only is this less difficult, it also reduces contact between your fingers and the filter, meaning you are less likely to leave an oil smudge on the glass. Now, while these filters are designed for the A7R4 and A92, they also come with these little flags that can be attached to the filter. These flags prevent light leak when these filters are used on previous generation Sony cameras, such as an A7R3 or A7 III. Now, if I were buying today, I'd still buy whichever model natively fits your sensor, but it's nice that they made the newer ones backwards compatible. Another little thing is that this magnet rod actually opens up into a tiny little flathead screwdriver, and there's also two tiny flathead screws on here. And I've seen on their website that they are exploring a design in which you can actually switch the filters out from the housing. Now, I'm not sure if they're trying to kind of unify the filter so that you can use it on different brands of cameras or what, but just be aware that that's something that they're doing. Personally, I only use one type of camera, so I don't have to worry about trying to fit different things. And I don't think I'd really want to be busting out this little screwdriver every time I wanted to change a filter from one camera to another. These are kind of expensive, so I guess it's an option for users to do whatever they feel is more appropriate. So now you have the full story behind why I stopped using the STC Optics ND filters, but it was only temporary as I waited for these new ones to become available. Now that they are, I will not use HSS anymore unless I also have to freeze action being hit with strong ambient light. Could probably make a whole video on that topic as well. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and comment below with any questions. Until next time, keep on shooting.